Sweet, sour, salty, bitter, and umami. That's the list you learned in school. Five basic tastes, right? This is what we've always been told. But researchers are starting to ask, what if there's more? I mean, what if we missed a whole nother category of basic tastes? And right now the spotlight's not just on one, but three different possibilities. Before this video, you probably thought it was obvious that there's five basic tastes. Always has been, always will be. But this list was changed quite recently. For most of history, scientists believed we could taste sweet, sour, salty, and bitter. It wasn't until the early 2000s that the term umami began to be accepted as a fifth basic taste. And umami is really that savory taste you get when you eat certain molecules called glutamates. But what does it actually take for something to count as a basic taste? One of the biggest requirements is that there's a specific stimulus and a matching receptor. In other words, there has to be this lock and key relationship between a molecule in the food and a receptor in our taste bud cells. Take sweetness as an example. We don't just notice sugar because it's in our mouth. We taste sugar because these molecules actually fit in perfectly with a pair of receptors on our tongue called T1R2 and T1R3. These receptors sit in specialized taste buds, and when a sugar molecule binds to it, it sends a signal to our brain saying like, hey, this food is tasting sweet. So when scientists go looking for a new basic taste, the first question they have to ask is, is there a unique molecule and a receptor that specifically recognizes it? And without that lock and key relationship, it's hard to argue that a new sensation would qualify as a new taste. And that brings us to our first candidate, kakumi. The word kakumi comes from Japanese and roughly translates to uh, heartiness or mouthfulness. Now, unlike like sweet or sour, kakumi is not such an obvious distinct taste. Instead, people describe it as giving food more depth or continuity, kind of a thicker, more longer lasting taste. Back in 2010, a research group led by Osu published a paper that got scientists really interested. They showed that certain compounds in foods like glutamopeptides or glutathione can actually activate our calcium sensing receptors in our taste cells. These compounds show up naturally in a lot of aged or fermented foods. Think about things like a Parmesan cheese, soy sauce, even garlic. When they're present, people don't say like, oh, I taste kakumi. More it's that they report that the food tastes more well-rounded or fuller or that the taste lingers longer. Now here's the debate. On one hand, there's strong receptor evidence. We know these certain compounds in food are triggering these calcium sensing receptors on our tongue. But on the other hand, sensory tests show that these molecules, they don't make a standalone taste. So it's not how sugar always elicits a sweet taste or MSG always results in a umami taste. Kakumi compounds sort of act like a taste booster. They enhance sweet or sour or bitter or umami taste. They don't create their own you know, new category of taste. Instead, they call it a taste modulator, which just means it changes how we experience other types of taste. It isn't a new, a brand new taste of its own. The next candidate for a new basic taste is actually fat, or sometimes as scientists call it, oleogustus. When most of us think about fat in foods, you probably are thinking about its texture or mouthfeel. Fatty foods like cheese or ice cream, they feel very creamy, and that's due to the fat. But scientists have discovered there might actually be more to the story, and that certain fat molecules may be interacting with our taste buds. What researchers have found is that it's not triglycerides, which are these big fat molecules that our taste buds respond to. It's actually free fatty acids, which are molecules that are the breakdown of these larger triglycerides or larger fat molecules. They've seen that compounds like oleic acid or linoleic acid activate specific receptors in our taste cells. 
these receptors are called CD36 in GRP120. In sensory studies, people could actually pick out these free fatty acids. In 2015, Richard Matz and his colleagues showed that participants consistently described free fatty acids as tasting different than sweet, sour, salty, bitter, or umami. Instead, they use words like pungent or rancid. And this new taste response to free fatty acid molecules in food led the researchers to term a new word oleogustus, which translates to the taste of fat. So where's the debate? Because the receptor evidence is strong. It appears that people perceive, you know, these fatty acids as a unique taste, but it doesn't come across as a pleasant one. Instead, it's more like a warning signal because these free fatty acids often are in uh, spoiled or oxidized foods, which is why some scientists argue that this makes oleogustus less of a new basic taste and more a protective or warning signal. Even so, fatty taste or oleogustus checks a lot of the boxes. It has a defined stimulus or molecule. It is a specific receptor and a specific perception of taste, which is why many researchers think this is the leading candidate of what might actually become the next basic taste. Now let's look at an unusual candidate, ammonium chloride. If you've ever had like the salty black licorice that's really popular in Scandinavia, you have tasted this. And unfortunately, I have tried that licorice. It is definitely one of the worst things I have ever tasted. And I immediately was looking for a garbage to spit it out. People tend to describe it as salty, sour, bitter, and something else that doesn't quite fit. For years, scientists believed that ammonium chloride's taste was really just made up of the five other basic tastes. But a study in 2023 totally changed this conversation. Researchers showed that ammonium chloride directly activated a taste receptor called OTOP1. This is the same receptor for how we perceive sour tasting foods which makes it seem like there's a pretty clear mechanism that this is a, you know, a basic taste and pretty strong behavioral evidence as well. The big question is, does ammonium chloride really qualify as a distinct sixth taste? Some argue that it's really just a special case of sour or sourness because it triggers that same taste receptor. Others believe that because ammonium chloride sort of tastes this sort of, it's a sharp taste or a very biting taste different than the five other tastes we currently have, that maybe it should be its own category. For now, textbooks are definitely going to stick with five basic tastes, but you know, science is always evolving and there might be a time in the future when kids learn about, you know, their six or even seven fundamental tastes. If you enjoyed this video, next I would check out my video about the difference between taste and flavor because I almost guarantee you have this wrong.